Switching it up a little bit here, we're going to talk about uh, Ringka King, the new Indian promotion from TNA, which translates roughly to King of the Ring. And then oh, we're going to ring, pretty... Ring, uh, ring of King or something like that. Something close to that. Close enough that it's uh, basically King of the Ring. And then we're going to talk a little bit about WWE having to bring back King of the Ring promotion going on. But first off, Ring Ka King. Now, there's no video of it online as far as I'm aware of. No, there isn't yet. So I haven't been able to watch anything, and I can't uh, really say what I think the promotion is in terms of quality. I've heard both that uh, the people that were saw it live enjoyed it, and that the production quality was about the same, if not a little bit better, than what you see with TNA and the Impact Zone. So that was a little bit surprising to me, because I didn't think that it would be that good for something that's a subsidiary of TNA, when TNA kind of can't get the ball rolling on their own. Uh, I heard as well that the production company behind it, like the uh, Colors TV, are the ones that are basically paid for this new set and stuff. So, hence the reason why there's more money going into this. Yeah, I'm not aware too much of what's going on with the Ring Kong Kang thing. Uh, I do know one thing, is that the champions are apparently Matt Morgan and uh, the tag team of, and this was confusing to me, Chavo Guerrero and the cowboy version of D.H. Smith. That seems odd. Yep. Uh, but, I mean, hey, I can't bash it until I see it, so... Uh, I'll give them but the benefit of the doubt. This is all temporary as well. Um, the Americans have only got a limited stay there. They're hiring a slew of Indian wrestlers to actually take this promotion off. So don't expect your favorites to be staying there long, you know, for long term. Uh, do you have anything that you're expecting to see come out of this that'll help TNA in any kind of way or do you think this is going to distract TNA more I think it's a good idea because they're bringing a full time wrestling promotion to India which would stop WWE in its tracks because they're not literally going down there all the time are they they go down there once once in a while to get a bit of an income boost and uh, also, since the fact that wrestling in India is considered something for rich people to do, you know, and the way the economy is going, it, it's a good, good move, and it's a good way for TNA to increase their international presence without using their big names. Well, one thing that I'm going to go out on a limb here and say is if you see Jinder Mahal get fired from WWE, I will be shocked because I think that T, uh, WWE, first off, is going to be a little bit wary about this Ring Kai King thing, and they won't want to let go of Kali or Jinder Mahal. But if for some reason you do see them go there, I think immediately they're going to go to Ring Kai King, not to TNA, and they could potentially be like big stars there. Um, yeah, definitely. They'll be holding this new championship and stuff. And for anybody else that wants to actually come over and actually do this thing, you know, it's a money maker. It's a way for TNA to make a little bit of extra cash without selling the name value of their TNA brand, you know. So it's a, it's a positive thing. And I commend Jeff Jarrett and and whoever thought of these ideas and, and you know, and all rules wrestling and stuff like that. I commend them because they're doing something different where everyone else is doing sort of the same old thing. They're thinking outside the box. Well, that gets us to the other King of the Ring. WWE is promoting a Bring Back King of the Ring uh, little thing on their WWE.com website, uh, basically just talking about what King of the Ring was and how it should be a pay-per-view again. Uh, I kind of agree and uh, disagree with this. I've been saying for a while, I think that it works well as the uh, three-hour Raw because they are able to get kind of a full King of the Ring tournament together. But at the same time, they're using the other people, like the main eventers, that don't need it 
on the card somewhere. And the thing I'd be weary about if they did a pay-per-view of King of the Ring again is I don't want to see a King of the Ring tournament where your participants are John Cena, CM Punk, The Miz, Del Rio, Big Show, etc., etc. We don't need Randy Orton ring winning King of the Ring. He doesn't need it. We don't need uh, Sheamus winning it for a second time. He doesn't need it. We need the people that do need it, like the Jack Swaggers and the Kofi Kingstons and everything like that. We need those Dolph people. Ziggler's. Dolph Ziggler, right. We need those people vying for that King of the Ring. And I don't want to see them bring King of the Ring back as a pay-per-view and be so uh, against the idea of using mostly mid-carders on the card that they would just throw all the main eventers on there and you would see the brand new King of the Ring and it's somebody like Rey Mysterio. You know what I mean? No, I agree with you on that one. Um, when they gave it to Regal like years back, I was happy as pie because he needed to get elevated. You know, when um, they gave it to the past King of the Rings before him, when they gave it to Booker, it was the thing what allowed Booker to become this big thing on a uh, SmackDown, you know, and win his uh, sixth world championship. At the end of the day, just like MITB, just like the Royal Rumble, it needs to be used as a way to get new talent over. Mm-hmm. Simple. And those who are not, you know, they're not in title feuds or um, haven't gotten into, like, the upper mid card or anything... Put them in the King of the Ring. Right. And, you know, and give it to someone who deserves it and who's showing great performance, great promise. A guy like Ziggler could use it as a way to brag, you know, so why not? Yeah, so if they were to do something like that, then I'd be completely down for it coming back as a pay per view, maybe replacing Capital Punishment or uh, Vengeance or something along those lines. But. If uh, if they're going to go the typical panic route that they sometimes go and throw John Cena in there because they're worried about John Cena, then I don't want to see it. Then I would rather them keep it on a three-hour Raw and deal with it that way. Well, uh, again, I agree with you 110%. You know, Keenery needs to be put in that format. It doesn't need a pay-per-view. They've got enough pay-per-views going on as it is. People are getting sick of them, so just keep it the way it is. All right, well, that's the end of that discussion. Uh, <laughs> trying to get through this uh, episode a little bit because we've got that smack talk, uh, smart out moment, best and worst of 2011 awards coming later on this week, and i got a lot of video editing that I'm going to do. But we are going to end this smack talk episode with a little bit of of 2012 with Profitless 2012. Stay tuned to part six.